This is how to start a career in IT in 2023. The first thing I'm going to ask you to look into and also one of the most important things is to get certified. So IT is definitely one of those areas in tech where employers are going to look for certifications, whether it's certifications for a specific tool that is used on the job or a general certification like the CompTIA A+, which is actually the one I would recommend getting if you're someone who is just starting out. So the CompTIA A+, is actually the certification that the most IT job listings are looking for in their candidates. And this is based on an article that I read from CompTIA themselves, who is the one that proctors this certification. And if you're completely new to the world of tech certifications, then at a high level, there are three types of broad certifications that you can get in tech. The first one is the one that I mentioned earlier, which is tool-based, where maybe you're getting a certification for using a specific tool in IT, whether it be a access management tool or some kind of SaaS product or software product. And then another one is a skill-based tool, which could be a certification that proves that you're able to do XYZ skill or XYZ thing, or prove that you're a subject matter expert in this specific area. The best example I can think of is a cybersecurity certification for pen testing, which isn't necessarily IT-based, but it gives you an idea of what those certifications are like. And then you have the very broad knowledge-based certifications like the CompTIA A+, which is really for foundational IT knowledge. So this is for the person who is just getting started in IT, has zero background, and is really looking to understand at a high level what foundational knowledge that you'll need to know going into an entry-level IT job. And the reason why I typically recommend going for a broader certification when you're just starting out is because of the fact that if you're a beginner, then you probably haven't had that much experience trying out different skill sets or going into different areas of IT since it is still a very broad term. And if you did end up taking a certification for a very niche skill set, let's say a cloud certification, unless you know that you want to go into cloud, then a broader certification is going to help you more in this area. But if you're someone who already knows where you want to go into, then I do agree that a more niche certification may be more helpful to you in getting that first job. So it really is up to you in what area that you want to go into, but certification is definitely one of the must-haves when it comes to getting an entry-level job in IT. So if you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you're already somewhat interested in an IT career, and maybe you're a beginner who has no experience either as a college student or a bootcamp student, or maybe you're working in a completely different sector or field and are trying to make a career switch into IT. And if that is the case, then I think this video is going to be really helpful to you especially if you're starting out with no experience and no background in IT whatsoever. The next thing is to reapply your existing experience to the IT space. This is something that I think is really important because a lot of times when you're trying to make a career pivot or a career change or you're a student and have no prior background in this specific space, then you probably don't think that anything that you've done in the past is relevant, but Honestly, you'd be surprised at how many things can be relevant when you're able to look back at it. For example, if you're looking to go into an entry-level IT support role, then if you have experience in customer service, then that experience is going to be very, very important and, and definitely very applicable to the job that you're applying for. Even if you weren't necessarily working in a technical position, you're still able to talk to customers, resolve their issues, communicate well with them, whether through verbal or, or digital communication. And all of these things are relevant within an IT support role, where you may be managing a ticketing queue or, or different requests submitted by users or customers, or maybe in college or a bootcamp, you are a teaching assistant and you're helping other students learn things in the curriculum or problem solve or resolve any bugs that they may be having, or maybe you're leading a lab all those skills can be directly correlated into a future role in IT, but it really is up to you to make those correlations so they are better able to update your resume so that when an employer looks at your resume, they're also able to make that connection between your customer service role or some leadership position that you've had in a student organization. And then they're able to take that experience and understand where you can apply that same background into a role like IT support or help desk specialist or whatever role that you're applying for. And don't forget to leverage your network 
companies are always looking for IT and support staff and it really is to your best interest if you're able to tell as many people as you can that you're currently on the job search for an IT position and this could be happening while you're simultaneously studying for a certification and applying to jobs yourself. It really is a numbers game so if you're applying to IT jobs then I would apply to hundreds of them not just tens of them. That is an important thing I always call out when it comes to the job search. It really is a numbers game and if you're able to network and talk to maybe previous people that you worked with or mentors or managers or even professors that you've had they may have a connection to provide or even a job referral for a specific role in IT that may be well suited for your experience level. I do think that there are many entry-level IT roles out there, so as long as you're able to buff up your resume, update your projects, add any personal projects, update your previous experience, make sure your educational background is on there, and if you're currently studying for a certification, if you had any leadership experience in the past, make sure all of that gets put on your resume so that you're well represented online to potential employers. And like many people have said, one of the biggest ways that people find new jobs is really through word of mouth and talking to people. So if you're able to tell your entire network that you're looking for a job in XYZ role or an XYZ sector, then that is something that is going to carry far and is also one of the quickest things to do if you're updating your LinkedIn profile or a status update. And another important thing, of course, is to learn the relevant skills for the job that you're applying to. For example, if you're applying to a junior sysadmin role, then I would look up a handful of sysadmin jobs and see the skills that are listed on those job listings. And once you find two or three skills that are repeated in multiple job listings, do some of your own research to learn those skills so that you're able to use them essentially in a personal project and then be able to put that on your resume to talk about with future employers. This is a great way to help cater your resume to a specific role so that you're not just blindly sending your resume to various different roles and the employer knows that you have a few skills listed in their preferred qualifications that are also on your resume. And that definitely helps you a lot in terms of first getting your foot in the door to get that first interview and be able to make a good impression on the hiring manager or the recruiter that you're talking to. And when it comes to personal projects, I really think that I do think that IT is one of the most hands-on roles in tech. And you may want to get some experience using or managing Windows, Linux, and Unix machines. This could be with a home lab, which is a great way to get started with personal projects. There are a handful of projects that you can do. This as well as learning command line tools, which is also going to be a big thing if you're working as a sysadmin or anyone who is working off of the terminal. 30, I would say the top 20 or 30 most commonly used commands will be really helpful to you to be able to get that flow going. Also learning networking basics is also going to be very helpful because part of your job working in IT, depending on where you're going into, whether it's support or if you're managing infrastructure or other information technology assets, you'll likely also need some background knowledge for networking architecture, which is another place where a certification like the A plus or the network plus or a more niche certification may be really helpful in getting your foot in the door. Alright, so that is it for this video. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them and I'll try my best to get back to you as soon as I can. If there are any other videos that you would like to see from me in the future, feel free to drop them in the comments below as well. We also have a Discord channel if you would like to join the conversation and meet other people in the community who are also on the job search and are starting their careers in cybersecurity and in IT. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. I post videos every Wednesdays and Sundays at 12 p.m. And hopefully I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!